Hello family, we thank the name of the Lord, we give him glory for all he's done for us. Today I want to share with you that God has gifted you with skills and talents he wants you to use in his service. The verse of scripture I'm reading today is Exodus chapter 28, reading from verse 2 to verse 3. It says, you are to make sacred garments, official clothing reserved for holy services, for Aaron your brother, for honour and for beauty ornamentation. Tell all the skilled and talented people whom I have endowed with a spirit of wisdom that they are to make Aaron's garments to sanctify him and set him apart to serve as a priest for me. This is the instruction God had given Moses after he had spoken to him and said that he was to choose his brother Aaron and his sons to serve as priests unto him. Then God in verse 2 says to Moses that they were to make sacred garments for Aaron and his sons to wear in their service as priests unto God. But God doesn't just stop there. He goes on to tell him or to tell Moses that those garments were to be made by people who were skilled and talented. And then what God goes on to say, even after he said that, is what I really want to draw your attention to. Because he says to Moses that those people that are skilled and talented, he, God, had endowed them with a spirit of wisdom endowed them with a spirit of wisdom and that is what I want to draw your mind to that many times even people who are not of 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 um, the body of Christ who do not share the same faith that we share understand that many people are born with natural gifts and abilities or what we will classify as talents and that those talents, sometimes over time, people work on those talents and they hone their skills. But God went a step further by explaining to Moses that those people who were skilled and talented, he, God, was the one who had given them the spirit of wisdom that was manifesting in the skills and the talents that they had. And that was what he was placing a demand on in asking Moses to speak to them and to say to them that they were to be the ones who were to make the garments that Aaron and his sons were going to wear as priests. And so today, as I share this, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that many times we undervalue the gifts, the talents, the skills and abilities that we have as people. Sometimes that starts off from even childhood, where maybe a parent has a child who likes to pull things apart and always wants to fix something. They seem to have this curiosity whenever they see something technical. They just want to understand what, what it is about that thing. So they're always pulling things apart. There might be a child who likes to draw all the time even though what they may be drawing may not necessarily be very beautiful, elegant, because they are not professionals. But many times, the natural talents that God gives to us begins to exhibit itself from a very young age. And it takes only parents, teachers who are wise, to grasp the fact that when a child begins to show an interest or a liking to some area or something specific, often it is an indication of a natural talent that God has given to that child. And so parents and teachers who often recognize that and have that understanding would encourage that child, even though they may be drawing something that is not most pleasant thing to look at, they might encourage that child 
um, by giving them colors to keep drawing and so on. And over, over time, as the child grows, their interest develops and then they begin to hone those skills. Unfortunately for some people, they may have exhibited certain likings, certain talents, but because it wasn't very honed and maybe their parents or their teachers didn't really place value on what they had, they made them think that it was a waste of time for them to even be pursuing that interest. And so often many people have come into adulthood having shunned the talents and the skills that they have, not recognizing that it is something that God in his infinite wisdom places in an individual so that every individual who is put on the face of this earth, by the time you come into this earth, God has wired you to have a liking and an interest in specific things because it is linked to your talent and it is a skill that he endows you with because he puts his spirit upon you and he enables his spirit to give you that peculiar ability that other people do not have. And so when God speaks to Moses and he says to Moses, go and tell the skilled people and the talented people. In other words, God knew that the people themselves knew that they were skilled and they also knew that they were talented. And perhaps their neighbors also knew that those people had specific skills and abilities that would be beneficial to put in together this garments that God had instructed Moses to make. And so they too were going to find themselves being useful for the service of God. And many times as believers, whenever we hear the words talents, we often think that talents, and it's, unless it is maybe singing, because when you sing and maybe when you play an instrument, you might have a forefront at the, at the service in that you'll be either involved in praise and worship, be a part of your band or so whatsoever. Sometimes we kind of have a, a narrow view as to the talents that could be useful within our services within our church congregations and so on. So that if somebody has anything else, we might think that it has no place or relevance within the church body. And so there are so many people who have been gifted by God, given the special wisdom of God to be able to exercise skill in certain areas who are not putting it to use within the body of Christ, but are actually putting it to use in the marketplace, i.e. in their secular professions, because in those secular professions, they tend to value those gifts, those talents, those skills that we sometimes take for granted or think it is of no relevance to our, our regular service or worship, if you like. But today, I just want to bring your mind to the fact that we've got to change that mindset. I remember speaking to a pastor who was telling me about some of the people in his um, eldership. And these were professional men with high flying jobs in, in technology, in, in international um, firms. And they were using their skill that they were using in the marketplace for the benefit of the church because they had come to understand that whatever gifts and abilities they may have, yes, they would have had to go to pursue maybe a degree, um, professional training and so on, but they recognize that that ability that they have has been given to them by Almighty God. And so they wanted to put it to good use in serving their church, even though the church that they go to may not necessarily be recognized as a, a big, massive church, all the different titles that we like to use, but they recognize that God gives our gifts and our talents for us to put to good use in service to him. So I want to quickly read a passage of scripture. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking parts which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. I also want to bring your attention to 1 Peter 4.10. It says this, 
just as each one of you has received a special gift, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God, employ it in serving one another as is appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace. Faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. And so this particular passage of scripture, as I shared yesterday, that God divinely appoints people to serve as priests. Somebody would have asked the question, what if I am not appointed to serve as priest or I am not chosen to be as leader as Moses was? Does it then mean that I have no part to play? But this passage of scripture is telling us that every talent, every skill can be put to good use in the service or in our service to God. So that you, nobody can say, because I have, wasn't called as a priest, I fe- feel like there's nothing for me to offer. We all have something to offer. But as I say, it starts by recognizing the special abilities, skills, talents God has given us and recognizing that it is a special wisdom he's endowed us with and being willing to surrender to God and to say, God, this special gift, ability, skill you've given to me, I want to put it to use in your service. So a typical example would be somebody who's a great, fantastic cook. Maybe they are a great cook, but they do not have a restaurant. They do not work in the, in the um, food industry. But everybody knows that they're really good at, at, at cooking. They've got very good hosting skills. If they were to put up a buffet or whatever, people would go and really enjoy themselves. That person could decide that maybe their church wants to have a, a, an initiative of reaching out to people who maybe are homeless that person could bring their skill to bear by saying that they would offer their time, their resources, including their money, to provide and to cook nutritious meals that could be used to serve the homeless. So suddenly, though this person is not a priest, may not be an elder, may not be a deacon, may not be all of those different titles that we normally use, they will still be serving God and really making a difference by cooking these sumptuous meals that the people, the homeless people they want to reach would enjoy. And as they enjoy that, guess what? They will be giving glory to God. And that would be a witness that this person is giving themselves because of what Christ has done in their lives. And so today, I just want to encourage us all or to ask the question first, is there a skill, an ability you have that could be of benefit to the body of Christ that you're not using? And if the answer is yes, ask God to show you how you can bring it to bear within your church or in some other way in the wider context because the body of Christ may not necessarily be your own church. It could be another interdenominational organization that you can put your gifts and skills to bear and the reason why I say this is also because of a familiar passage of scripture that I'm sure many of you are aware of and that would in fact be our memory verse for the next couple of days and it's in Proverbs 22 verse 29 it says this do you see a man skillful and experienced in his work he will stand in honor before kings he will not stand before obscure men and as I read this passage in preparation for this message it dawned on me that the first person that our skill and our talents is to cause us to stand before in honor is the king of all kings almighty God because in that corner where you you put your skill and your talents to use that nobody else is seeing. Guess who's the first person who sees it? God himself. And when God sees your service, this skill, this talent that you're putting to use in his service, and he's so pleased with you, he is the one who is a promoter. And he knows exactly what he needs to do to bring you before the kings of this earth, before noble men of this earth and women because 
he would do so to let you know that he values how you have faithfully used that talent, that skill, 